wrote in and said, how do I feel about wallpaper coming back? And what are some good places to put it? And so I wanted to start out with a picture of a client's home um, where we did a couple rooms and one of them is the dining room. And I wanna talk about, um, ignore the furniture, but just look at the walls for a minute and the ceiling and you see what we've been living with for the past decade, which is a lot of, not everyone, but the common kind of trend was to have these light, bright, neutralized interiors. And I think that's really what we needed with the recession. Um, people mentally didn't want to have to process everything they were looking at. And so there's no easier way to do that than just kind of whitewash everything. Um, and so when these clients came to me, they were looking for, um, they actually wanted to brighten up this room and um, we were able to do that with wallpaper and paint. We actually kept the existing chairs and table. We had a new light fixture, painted the ceiling, and added this fantastic wallpaper, which does not darken the space despite it being darker than what was currently there. It actually added lightness, personality, and depth to the space. Um, so I'm pretty happy about wallpaper coming back. Um, there really is no faster way to add personality to a room um, than wallpaper, even if it's just with a simple grass cloth. So as far as my favorite places to put it, the first one would be rooms with an angled ceiling. Here we have an interior by Heather Dewberry, and she has treated these crazy angled ceilings. Um, probably there's a dormer happening on the outside of uh, this part of the house, but on the inside it creates quite a challenge and she uh, visually, but you don't feel that way because of the way she's treated the walls with this gorgeous paper. Um, here's another angled ceiling room. This interior is by Frank DiBiase. And again, low ceilings, strange angles, um, kind of quirky windows. And um, I wish you could see the whole picture, but Instagram's not gonna let us do that in a story format. But look how lovely and cohesive it feels. Um, it's just really charming space. So the second place that I like to put wallpaper is a bedroom. Here they've used it on the fifth wall or the ceiling um, just to add a little bit of pizzazz again to what would have otherwise been a very just kind of straightforward space. Beautiful but straightforward. Um, this pattern on the ceiling makes it feel very uh, just different and unique. So if you like a little bit more oomph, um, here's this acanthus stripe by Schumacher. This bedroom is by R. Cartwright Designs. And it, um, and I didn't say the other one was by um, Duet Design Group, the other bedroom. But this one's by R. Cartwright Designs and it the colorway adds just a bit of depth. And again, pretty neutral palette otherwise in the bedroom from what we can see of the window panels and the headboard and the bedding, but this depth in the wallpaper just really creates something fantastic. All right, third place I like to put it is a uh, powder room. So this pattern is by Schumacher, the interior is by Heather Hilliard, and this is a pattern that's been around for a long time. I think Mick Jagger put this in maybe a dining room in a black and white colorway in the 60s. So um, truly there's always a way to make something look current and contemporary. Um, so this is called Queen of Spades and it's here in a very subtle colorway, but it still adds just a nice richness to that space. If you want a little bit more oomph, here is another pattern by Schumacher called Chiming, um, Chiming Dragon, I believe. And this particular room was done by Saffordston Interiors and Designs. And, you know, you've got a neutral mirror, neutral marble, neutral paneling around the wind or moldings around the windows but then you've got this bam this pattern that you walk into a space you only spend a little bit of time in every day and it just gives you this happy surprise all right so we've talked about the powder the bedroom angled room. okay so the last space that I like uh, wallpaper is in an entryway and here's another power statement um, that is a trend you'll see in wallpaper these days is large-scale patterns and this one is by Hannah Benick, 
and she has used this citrus garden motif um, to really tell a story about whoever walks in that in that house. Um, you would think the people that live here are happy, gracious, fun. Um, so I love that wallpaper can tell that story in an instant. Um, and, and oftentimes for much less money than an original piece of art might tell a story. Okay, so the final image is this uh, entryway by Amy Carthiser. Carthiser? I'm sorry, Amy. Design. Um, and it's a pattern that we saw in a bedroom already. I think it's Feather Bloom um, by Schumacher. And here it's just a subtle statement when you walk in. And I love that it picks up on the pattern in, or the shape of the mirror um, molding. So I think without this wallpaper, this space would not have been nearly as successful as it is. So those are my four places to use wallpaper, um, angled ceilings, bedrooms, um, powder rooms and entryways. And I'm excited that it's back. And if, I don't think it ever went away, but I'm excited that more and more people are kind of moving away from the more um, just monochromatic look and adding a little bit of depth back into their interior design. So thanks for joining us. I will be back next Saturday at 10 a.m. Submit your questions through DM or you can do it on our Facebook group at Contented Interiors. Thanks so much. Take care.